Anya beckoned Casey to follow her. He ambled after her lithe little black-clad frame, lugging his stuff to the front door of the squat. There were several people involved with the process of unlocking the door in various places to let the two in. Unlike most days, when it's unlocked and unguarded, Casey observed. He and Anya walked inside, and she took him to a band practice room on the third floor. You can leave your things here. If you end up spending the night, there are mattresses. Do you have time to fill me in on what's going on? Casey asked, trying to sound like he just needed a little filling in rather than a complete introduction to the situation. Time. Yes, probably, Anya answered honestly. Now we wait. Until they attack, we have time. If they don't attack, we have more time. Is there a particular reason they're attacking now? He asked. No. They just attack now and then because we're squatters, she explained. They could make a lot of money out of this neighborhood if we were not in it messing up their plans to get rich. Where are the police? He asked. How do you know they're coming? When they attack, there are always at least 500 of them, she explained. We almost always have been able to hear in advance somehow when this many police are assembling somewhere, putting on their riot gear. But you say maybe they won't attack. Yes, she replied. Sometimes they just want to see if we know they are planning an attack. When they see we have prepared defenses, they cancel their plans. Then, changing the subject, she asked, shall we go downstairs? They were standing in a hallway in front of a practice room that smelled strongly of sweat. Casey followed Anya back downstairs. The two of them then took a walk around the perimeter of the defenses surrounding the squat. Each barricade, Casey noted, smelled strongly of petrol. Casey thought about asking if anyone had ever been killed in one of these battles, but he wasn't sure he wanted to know the answer. He was scared, but found the whole situation electrifying as well. He didn't know about their tactics, but he knew he liked these squatters and how their very presence in a city seemed to have a way of throwing into question the whole idea of property ownership. He wasn't sure what he was getting into, but he had to find out. The atmosphere in the dead German cafe felt a bit like an emergency ward before the wounded people come in. There were first aid kits of various kinds around, and people with gear on that indicated they had some idea of what to do with the contents of those kits. The cafe wasn't serving food as such, or beer, but there was a massive bag full of bread rolls which were being consumed along with various tubes of mushroom pate and lots of coffee. Soon dusk turned to the closest thing approaching real darkness that northern Europe had to offer this time of year. The tension in the atmosphere ratcheted up a bit. A flare rose up into the sky, launched from somewhere nearby. It arced at least a hundred feet up and then began turning back down to earth burning bright red the whole time, lighting up the streets beneath it. Over the course of the next few seconds, all of the barricades then went up in flames. What's going on? Casey asked Anya. 